stages like this, um, I'm definitely more switched on and I know that I have a... Yeah, I love the attack from Martin. I just perfectly timed. He didn't quite have the legs to pull it off. And I was never going to succeed with you know, uh, Roglic, uh, Pogachar, so many riders vying for, for the sprint finish there. Of course, Julian Alaphilippe to, 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 to name one. But if you're ever going to take a chance, he was never going to win that sprint. So uh, really a, a powerful effort. And uh, hopefully we'll see him continue uh, mixing things Things up as the Tour de France proceeds. But the thing that stuck out to me was just the cool, calm, collected, composed Jumbo Visma, and in particular, Primoz Roglic. Watching him dominate this sprint was it was what we expected. I, I do want to remind everybody that I did pick him for the win yesterday. Um, he, he delivered, as, as I predicted. But just in the drops with, you know, 500, 600 meters to go, holding the wheel that he needed to hold. Um, you know, we saw Miguel Angel Lopez making a move on the right side uh, late, uh, a strong move by Lopez. Uh, Roglic effectively boxed him out. And when he went, there was nobody near to his level to, to challenge him. Uh, Roglic has shown that he has a great kick in these uphill bunch finishes. Um, and, and, and he delivered. And the other thing that we're seeing in Roglic, which Gregor touched on in, I believe it was uh, stage one, was his interviews are actually good. <laughs> like normally I mean, after I the was race, we're thinking that today. I was. I, this is like the most chipper Primoz Roglic I've ever seen in my life. Sorry to cut you off, but yeah, I, I had yeah. the exact same thought and I'm kind of excited about it. Yeah, I know. Like we've been hearing for years and seeing in sort of behind the scenes videos that Primos has this uh, sort of funny, dry uh, persona and and, and uh, uh, a good sense of humor. And he's, he's a bit of a character, but every time we talk to him after a stage, he, or before a stage, he's just, you know, doing the very sort of robotic, I'm going to answer your question without actually giving you an answer type response. But no, he's he's relaxed. Uh, he seems to be having fun and, and enjoying the moment. I, I don't know if that's uh, the effect of like media training during the coronavirus break or if it, it is, he's got already got a Grand Tour victory under his belt. He knows he's the strongest rider in this race. All he needs to do is you know, the simple thing of winning these stages and, and winning this bike race. How hard could it be? How hard could it be? Uh, as, as you were saying that, I was kind of just, I've compared this Primoz Roglic to what we were seeing at the Giro d'Italia last year, because right now Primoz Roglic, he is looking, you know, pretty much exactly how he looked at the start of the Giro and pretty much for the entire start of the 2019 season. The way he was just able to accelerate up to Guillaume Marta in the finish, he didn't even have to get out of the saddle. Uh, if you couldn't tell how hard he was going, all you have to do is look back at the face of Julian Alaphilippe, Egan Bernal, who had to pull out of the lineup and go back uh, in the group. All these favorites were just dying, and Primoz Roglic was just tapping away on the pedals, looked absolutely brilliant. And, you know, he was doing that at the Giro last year, and I went... I went out, wore uh, the Primoz Roglic badge on my sleeve and said in our show every day, the Primoz Roglic was going to win the Giro and he came completely undone. He was holding on by a string in 2019 by the end of it. So I, I'm, you know, I'm learning from past mistakes. I'm not going to uh, completely ride on him. That said, he was my captain on my fantasy team today and I am expecting a very, very dominant Primoz Roglic for at the very least the next week and a half.